Garland and the nearly two-year investigation into the Louisville Police Department. Garland releasing a report that found the city and its police force engaged in a pattern of unlawful and discriminatory policing, depriving people of their constitutional rights. And Attorney General Garland was joined by officials from the Louisville Police Department when he spoke about those findings a little while ago. The department has concluded that there is reasonable cause to believe that Louisville Metro and LMPD engaged in a pattern or practice of conduct that violates the First and Fourth Amendments of the Constitution. Some have via videotaped themselves throwing drinks at pedestrians from their cars, insulted people with disabilities, and called black people monkeys, animal, and boy. This conduct is unacceptable. It is heartbreaking. That's the Attorney General. This investigation was originally prompted by national outrage after the death of Breonna Taylor, who was shot and killed by Louisville police officers while she was unarmed in her own apartment. The police officers had no justification, no reason at all to be there. They shot her dead. Let's bring in Kimberly Whaley, legal contributor and former U.S. attorney. So, Kim, this is a, this is a remarkable thing the Justice Department has done here. Why, why do you think the Department of Justice's involvement in these types of situations is, is critical, really? It's critical, Terry, because there's not a lot of incentive for police forces within their community dealing with prosecutors to self-check in this regard because everyone sort of knows each other. And if you know you're going to aggravate the prosecutor, the prosecutor's going to aggravate a police witness, maybe they'll look the other way. And it looks like that's what's happened here. So many instances where there was not accountability for wrongdoing, not even reports, not very good, um, you know, a training, oversight, all of those things. And the Justice Department is the Justice Department. One of their obligations is to enforce the federal constitution, enforce civil rights. And they're saying here that this is not just a few bad apples. This is a systematic problem where you're seeing violations of the Fourth Amendment, because when someone pulls you over, that's a search of yourself, your body, if you're arrested, uh, that police officers are taking it too far. And then also in protest, the First Amendment, talking about how when when people are, you know, talking back to police officers, they get bullied and sometimes with violence and sometimes with violence that can be lethal. So, Kim, we have seen delay after delay for the trials for those four police officers charged in the death of Breonna Taylor. So is this DOJ investigation going to impact those at all? Well, it looks like the most recent delay was because the judge um, in with one of those defendants, the judge was persuaded by defense counsel that there was just so much evidence that that defendant needed time to go through it. I think the judges in those cases are also thinking about constitutional rights, the constitutional due process rights of those defendants. So as far as the timing, I don't think it'll have an impact, but it's going to be hard for potential jurors not to pay attention uh, to this statement from the Justice Department, 90 plus pages, some really damaging stories, very heartbreaking stories. And so I think prosecutors and defense lawyers are going to have to be careful um, once the, the juries are impaneled to make sure that they're not somehow persuaded one way or the other about the evidence in these cases based on what the Justice Department has said about the pattern and practice of discriminatory policing in Louisville. I mean, the pattern and practice of discriminatory policing in Louisville, Kim, as, as the DOJ begins its new investigation in Memphis, yesterday uh, uh, passed five police reform ordinances there and things like traffic stops, data transparency, police oversight. It's 2023. We have police in major cities which are being found by the federal government to operate in a discriminatory manner against the, the black citizens of, of that city. What? I, 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 look, it's a big question, but is this, well, what's the next step? How do you really get on top of this? It's, it's, we've been after this for a hundred years and more. 
Well, a couple points. One is that as the DOJ found that, you know, there's much more discrimination on the basis of race, of course, against African-American um, uh, individuals, but that some of this violence and bullying and police misconduct also happens against white citizens. It's really about empowering individuals with the massive power of the government. Police officers, if they arrest you, it's an arrest. If you or I did it, Terry, that would be kidnapping. They have a lot of power and there has to to be pushed back on the other side. Now, what's happening in Memphis is these, these sort of special investigative units. It was the Scorpion unit, um, where across the country they're empowering small elite forces to have extra special powers. In this instance, it was this routine traffic stops where they would start to look for other kinds of crimes. But And again, you put sort of young police officers not well trained in de-escalation techniques in an environment where they're supposed to find crime and you're going to see abuses. So that investigation, DOJ, I think is going to have particular focus on these special units. Uh, of course, even regular police officers, as we're seeing now with the report in Memphis, are a problem. Um, but this is something we've got to shift the mentality of our law enforcement away from, I have the power and you better comply with my what I have to say, to you know a community-based sort of we're in this together and, and we're here to help each other. And I think it's that mentality that, as you indicate, is very difficult to shift. And we're now decades and decades into it and seeing these abuses are, are ongoing. And I'm just glad to see DOJ is on it because, of course, under Donald Trump, um, the consent decrees, things like that were pulled back. Jeff Sheff Sessions issued a, a memo to the Department of Justice, to the prosecutor saying, we don't want to do these consent decrees. We want to give more power to the states. And there I think it's clear there's a role for the federal government in ensuring compliance with the Constitution. Hmm. Well, hopefully that'll send a message to other departments across the country so they don't have to wait for another police beating or a videotape to service or an innocent person to be killed at the hands of police officers. DOJ jumps in. You see they're going to hold people accountable. Hopefully people will take care of the culture before the culture reveals itself once again. Great point. Kimberly, thank you.